Well, we sure began 2024 in a very unexpected way. It all began with me announcing that I'll no longer be using the Amex Trifecta as my main setup for the foreseeable future. Even I didn't see that one coming because if you saw my number one default credit card video from some time back, you would have known that the Amex Trifecta was the main staple of my overall setup around which every other part hinged. So the question becomes, what will I do next? Well, I sorted through my binder of mayhem to figure out what my next move was going to be. And this video is the result of my heavy calculations and thoughts. Let the fun begin. My credit card strategy for 2024 will have four parts. The first one is called the Mixed Core. Part two will be the airline credit cards. Part three will follow with the hotel credit cards and we'll wrap things up with part four, which will be dedicated to the new card section. Let's take it all in order and step by step. With part one coming first here, which is the midst core, the focus will be on everyday spend. So pretty much stuff what I'm doing when I'm not traveling somewhere else, and also here, you'll notice up at the top, it says percent return. So when I show uh, a rewards category for a card, I'm not showing triple points. Rather, it might be like 3.75% or something like that for the anticipated return I get in that category. I now reveal to you the first row of cards. It begins with the Schwab version of the American Express Platinum card, and I'm using that one to uh, cover my paid flights. Doesn't matter if I'm flying Southwest, Alaska, Etihad, or any other airline, if it's being paid in cash, no points being used, then I'm putting that on the American Express Platinum card because the rate here of five points per dollar without having to use a portal is awesome. I currently value Amex points for my purpose through the Schwab brokerage account redemption at 1.1 cents each. So 1.1 times five yields five and a half percent here for that return. Up next, we have four of the most dynamic and flexible credit cards on the market. The Chase Freedom Flex, Discover It Cashback Credit Card, City Custom Cash, and the US Bank Cash Plus. You'll notice that the Chase Freedom Flex and Discover It Cashback say the word quarterly 5% underneath both of them. That's because I can't choose the rewards categories and they're also not set. Rather, they change every quarter of the year or every three months, and that's according to an overall rewards calendar that the banks release a little before each quarter begins. I'll also have you know that Chase issues its cashback in the form of ultimate rewards points. So if instead of using just straight cashback and I want to do some sort of travel this year or next year, then having the rewards currency be points to redeem for a higher value through a card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred is a great opportunity. The Discover It Cashback also operates on the same quarterly type of calendar, although it does not issue points at all. This is straight pure cashback. The City Custom Cashback is similar, but still quite different in its approach. There's no calendar, there's no enrollment. It just works in terms of how much you spend in eligible categories. So as you can see now here on the visual, there are eligible spend categories restaurants gas stations grocery stores and the list goes on city will automatically detect in which of those categories you spent the most amount of your money and then give you five percent back on that everything else earns one percent so if you basically want to engineer your own rewards here and guarantee five percent on a certain type of category just use the card for that one spend category and one more side note about city here is that they also issue their cash back on that card in the form of thank you points so if i want to transfer those over to my city premiere and then out to transfer partners for a trip i can do so otherwise redeem the points as cash back either way it's a great way to earn the cash back in the form of points here. And then we have the US Bank Cash Plus, which gives you, again, quarterly categories, but you get to choose them from a select or predefined list here. So they've got fast food, TV, internet streaming, cell phone, home utilities, and a bunch of others, many of which you do not see on a lot of other popular cards. So this one is a great gap filler, so to speak, uh, wherever you have a rewards gap that other cards don't cover, this one can do a great job and give you 5% in two of these that you choose and enroll every quarter. The quarterly spend cap is also a little bit higher than Chase and Discover at $2,000 per quarter, earning 5%. All right, now let's move on to row number two. Actually, before we do that, take one last good look at that top row of cards, how the percent return is 5% or better for every single one. And to show you kind of how this 
choice core lead top spend thing works as a sample for quarter one here. I'm gonna flip those over now. Uh, that shows you how I'm actually using these cards for groceries, dining, gas, internet, and utilities. So that gives you more of a real world look of how those choice types of categories can fit in to your everyday type of spend. Just realize that what you see on the screen right now will rotate or change every quarter. So I may swap in different cards based on what the calendars or the choices happen to be. Now on to row number two. I've got the Amazon Prime Visa to earn 5% back at Amazon. The U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve for 4.5% at Costco and Target. The way this works is that this card earns triple points on all mobile wallet spend. Both Costco and Target accept mobile payments, therefore I use this card at those retailers and points are worth one cent each for cash back. That would make this return actually 3%. But since I'm leaning toward a travel redemption with these points, that would be 50% more for that type of redemption, making your points 1.5 cents each for a four and a half percent return. Now bringing in the Amex Blue Cash Everyday for 3% back on US online retailers. Great for all my non-Amazon online shopping. The Capital One Saver One for 3% back Back on entertainment and the Wells Fargo autograph earning 3x points which is 3% cash back for my parking, tolls, and transit. Wrapping up part one here with the third row of cards, I have the City Double Cash which earns 2% cash back for all non-category spend. That's 1% when you make your transaction and then the other 1% when you pay your bill off. The Built MasterCard is earning 1.25 cents on my rent payments because I redeem for travel, that's a minimum of 1.25 cents per point going through the portal or potentially more with transfer partners. And then I have my two business cards here at the end, the Amex Blue Business Plus for a 2.2% return there. And whenever Amex is not accepted, I also have the Bank of America Business Advantage Unlimited Cash Rewards card, which earns a flat 1.5%. Quick side note here, if I counted correctly, that's already 14 cards and I'm not even done yet. So I wanted to let you all know that I'm not advocating that everybody needs to get dozens of cards to make a successful strategy. Remember, I'm a credit card YouTuber who reviews and compares cards for all of you to be more informed. So my strategy, yes, is above and beyond what it needs to be to even be practical. But what uh, a good takeaway is so far is that if you want to maximize your rewards, you may have to have two, three, four cards because not one card will maximize every category for you. So if that is your case and you plan to apply for several more cards this year to beef up your strategy, just make sure that you take into account how important security is online. Whenever you apply for a new card or do online banking, you want to make sure your information is secure and get alerted if it's not. Since your focus is on making a better financial future for yourself, you don't want to let a scammer take that away from you. Have you ever Googled yourself and were shocked to find your personal information exposed on one of those public listing sites? These sites can have your full name, email, and even your personal address. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify the data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link right here. Aura also includes so much more to protect you and your family from online threats, including a built-in antivirus software, VPN, password management tool, identity theft protection, and more. It basically gives you a single place to go for all of your online protection needs at one affordable price. I also love the ability to get alerts whenever my credit report is viewed and when a new card gets reported for the first time. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information, or you can take action by going to Aura.com slash Mark Reese to start your two week free trial. That's Aura.com slash Mark Reese, and I'll put the link down below in the description as well. That way you can get to it really easily. Now back to the rest of the video with a really cool workaround that I figured out how to maximize my rewards even further and you can do the same. Pro tip, you'll notice a lot of those cards I just mentioned had spend caps per quarter or per month and one way around that is to either use just different cards or get multiples of a same or similar card. So for instance here, I've got the Freedom Flets and the original Chase Freedom card. That original Freedom, by the way, preceded the Flets and it's actually a Visa credit card, whereas the Flets is a MasterCard. And they have these same 5% rotating uh, categories every year. So if you max out one, let's say it's grocery stores and you spend a lot there as a family, um, you spend your 1500 bucks, 
you then retire that card for the rest of the quarter and then switch to your other one. Same thing holds true here with Discover. So I have two Discover It Cashback credit cards. These are identical. I just chose a slightly different blue color design to keep them separate in my wallet. Uh, this one I've had for many years and this one I just got recently. Um, again, same quarterly calendar, so the uh, categories will always overlap. But if you match that one, then switch to the other. And because this one is still brand new to me in my first year, I'm also going to get the cashback match, which is Discover's bonus, meaning however much cashback I earn in the first 12 months through my spend, uh, Discover matches that. So let's say I earn 400 bucks, I'll actually end up with 800. And then for that city custom cash card, data points abound of people being able to get multiple of these despite the term saying that you can only get one. Now it seems to me that's only in reference to people applying for multiple custom cash cards. You'll just be issued one if you get approved. But the backdoor way to get multiple custom caches and use them strategically for different categories is via product change. So I still have the old Legacy City Dividend card here, which functions on one of those quarterly calendars where a city announces the calendar quarter by quarter. They have their spend caps and you activate or enroll. But I like the idea of having a monthly cap and the ability to select my own categories uh, by only using the card for a specific category. So if I can product change this into multiple custom cash cards, that would be a huge win as well. Moving right along to part number two, the airline credit cards, or should I say airline credit card? Because I just have one of these that I'll be using. The focus is just on benefits, not spend, because remember the MX Platinum card is what I'm using for all paid flights. Therefore, when it comes to airline cards, this in this case, it's the City Business uh, Platinum Select card here. Uh, I'm using it just for the benefits. There are actually some pretty nice ones too, like a first free checked bag, preferred boarding, that's currently group number five out of nine total groups, so it's pretty good. 25% on in-flight discounts for food and drinks, that is, and 25% uh, discount on the in-fly Wi-Fi. Now for a part that usually surprises a lot of people. Part three here is dedicated to my hotel cards, and I don't just use these for benefits. That's half of it. The other half is I do use these for spend, but only select spend. Let me show you what I mean. Here are the four cards that I have that participate in the Marriott Bonvoy program, specifically the Bonvoy Brilliant, the Ritz-Carlton card, the Bonvoy business and the discontinued legacy Bonvoy Premier Plus business, that one comes from Chase. You'll notice as we go along here that a lot of benefits do overlap across these cards. So in terms of ones that I actually use, I put those here in bold font. So if I have, for example, gold status across three cards, you only use gold status from one card. So I'll put that in bold, typically on the first one that you see. So with the Bonvoy Brilliant, I like the six times point earning rate for all my paid stays, the free night certificate up to an 85,000 point value, the 25 elite night credits is phenomenal, and also uh, platinum lead status, which is my favorite tier in the entire program. In my opinion, actually, it's the sweet spot of the entire program in terms of incremental value going from one uh, level to the next. With the Ritz-Carlton card that confers another free night certificate up to an 85,000 point value and then the two business cards give free nights up to a 35,000 point value. Bringing in my newest hotel credit card, the Choice Privileges Select, this gives me 10 points per dollar at Choice Properties, also an annual bonus of 30,000 points which I can use for a free night, automatic platinum lead status, and I also kind of forgot about this, it earns five points per dollar on phone plans and has cell phone protection. So I actually have my auto pay for my uh, phone on this card right now. Great way to keep it active, earn some points, and also have it covered. With Hilton, I've got the Hilton Honors Business credit card from American Express. I like this for all paid stays at 12 points per dollar. Uh, the free night certificate, which has no caps or limits or anything like that, but I have to spend $15,000 over the course of an entire year to earn that. Uh, gold Elite status is also automatic, which I value highly. I then got a couple more cards with the IHG program. They're both the Premier, the one on the left is the Personal, the one on the right in the darker color is the Business version. Both will earn 10 points per dollar on your paid stays with IHG. They both offer a free night certificate up to a 40,000 point value, and either one will give you auto platinum elite status. I also have the World of Hyatt credit card. That one's been open for a number of years too. Earns four points per dollar at Hyatt. 
buy it. Freelance certificate, category one to four is the restriction there, and automatic discoverist status in their program. And finally, the Wyndham Rewards Earner Business Card, eight points per dollar at Wyndham, an annual point bonus of 15,000 points. Again, good for a free night there. And auto diamond elite status. So you may have guessed it. Yes, whenever it comes to a paid stay, I like to use hotel credit cards rather than a regular bank card or anything else, even over a cashback card. I like these because uh, the multipliers tend to be quite good and you also earn points as base points just for being enrolled in the hotel programs. And then with elite status, you get an additional boost. That's like three different layers of point earnings. So you might be able to walk away with 15, 20, 25 points per dollar per paid stay when you have one of these cards in the midst. And that is huge value. Congratulations, you've made it to the final part of the video, part four, all about new cards, which should be the most exciting part of today's feature video. But I'm gonna have to let you all down just a little bit because my actual account for the new cards coming this year is a big fat zero. It's a sad, sad truth. But the reason behind it is a very exciting one because I will be buying a new house at the end of this year, targeting quarter four, 2024. Whenever you apply for a mortgage, you don't wanna be applying for a bunch of credit cards or other financial products that will result in inquiries and newly opened accounts showing up on your credit report. Those types of things can lower your credit score. Usually it's just temporarily, but even still, during a temporary period of time when you're buying a house, you want the best score possible to qualify for the best rates possible. And frankly, it just doesn't even look good if you've actively and recently been applying for more credit before going for a bid purchase. So to put that risky looking behavior aside, I'll have a nice clean slate going into my application. Bringing this whole video in for a nice smooth landing here for a summary, you'll notice I've got 24 cards here for my yearly strategy. And you're probably asking yourself, as I did, will I be carrying all 24 cards with me in my wallet? That would be ridiculous and borderline, if not full line crazy. So look out for another video coming probably pretty shortly here of the what's in my wallet type of video where I will expose what I'm carrying with me and using just for a specific quarter of the year. And that is a wrap for my credit card strategy of 2024. If you believe this video can help other people by showing them some good cards that they might want to consider for their own strategies give this video a like and consider subscribing for more great content just like this one also check out the links down below in the description area to earn some more cash back when you shop online through Rakuten you can even choose to switch your rewards preference over to Amex points if you like to get your two-week free trial with aura and protect yourself online and to view my site with some great credit card offers that I've organized into different categories to help you find the cards that you like best and don't forget to check the community tab of this channel where I post about things like offers, deals, and updates, so check them out to jump on them before they're gone. I hope today's video brought you some great value and things to think about, but of course, if you were overwhelmed by the amount of cards and content that we covered in today's video, check out this next one here about the main credit card strategy that pretty much everybody neglects. It will really simplify things for you. See you there.